We just learned that the directional derivative of function f in the direction of unit vector u is partial derivative of f with respect to x times a plus partial derivative of f with respect to y times b. And remember that when you had a unit vector u, these are the components of your unit vector. But remember from what we learned in elementary calculus, we can use the dot product. This is basically the vector f of x, f of y, dot, the vector a and b. Or basically, finding the dot product between two vectors. Remember that. The dot product between two vectors, v and w, is denoted by v dot w. And if you have the components of each vector, to find the dot product, you multiply the components respectively. Then add them all together. That's how we define the dot product between two vectors. So here you have the partial derivative of f times a plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times b, which is the definition of your directional derivative. But this is nothing but the dot product. We can basically define a new vector, which we call the gradient. And this is equal to the vector, including partial derivative of f with respect to x, comma, partial derivative of f with respect to y, and then you multiply that by u. This is the dot product. So we just introduced something new. This vector, the gradient vector, is very important because it is orthogonal to level curves. If f is a function of two variables, x and y, then the gradient of f is the vector function. So this is a function, but the components of this function are in vector form, defined by the gradient of f is a vector, partial derivative of f with respect to x, comma, partial derivative of f with respect to y, or partial derivative of f with respect to x in the direction of unit vector i, plus partial derivative of f with respect to y in the direction of y-axis which is represented by its unit vector, j. So any vector, like a and b, has two representations, ai plus bj, or basically in the vector format. Again, let us review the definition of the gradient. The gradient of a function at a point, like p, is the vector, the gradient of f at point p, which is the very first component of this vector is partial derivative of f with respect to x. The second component of this vector is partial derivative of f with respect to y. If you have three variables, well, the gradient is a vector function with three components. The first component, the second component, the third component, the partial derivative of f, with respect to x, partial derivative of f with respect to y, and partial derivative of f with respect to z. And as we mentioned before, the gradient vector is orthogonal if you have point P on the surface if you think about the level surface, it is orthogonal to the level surface. And in 2D, it's going to be orthogonal to level curves. Properties of the gradient. Suppose you have a function, f, and the other function is g. They are differentiable, and c is a constant. Then the gradient of f plus g is the gradient of f plus the gradient of g. The gradient of c times f, you can basically take this c and write it in front of the gradient of f. 
the product rule for gradients. The gradient of f times g is f times gradient of g plus g times gradient of f. You also have the chain rule for the gradients. If f of t is a differentiable function of one variable t, then the gradient of f of f of x, y, z can be written as f prime of f of x, y, z times the gradient of f. Some important properties of the gradient that we just listed here for you. What is the interpretation of the gradient? Assume that the gradient is not zero. Suppose u is a unit vector making an angle theta with the gradient. Then the directional derivative of f in the direction of u can be written as the magnitude of the gradient times cosine theta. The gradient function, the gradient of f at point p in the direction of maximum rate of increase of f at p. If you multiply the gradient by a negative sign, it is going to be the direction of maximum rate of decrease at p. And finally, the gradient of f is always normal or orthogonal to the level curve or level surface of the function at the given point. So if I ask you to find the maximum rate of increase, you're going to basically work with the gradient of f. If I ask you to find the maximum rate of decrease, you're going to work with the negative gradient of f. And if I ask you to find a normal vector to the level curve or level surface, or basically the tangent plane, you basically build and calculate the gradient for that function. So if you think about the level curves at point P, if we just work with our gradient function, it's always orthogonal to the level curves. This is 2D. In 3D, it is going to be orthogonal to the level surface as we saw before. In this example, we have a function x to the fourth, y to negative two. We have a point two and one. Question says, find the unit vector for me that points in the direction of maximum rate of change at point P. Okay, we know that the gradient points in the direction of maximum rate of increase. If we are looking for the direction of maximum rate of decrease, you multiply your gradient by negative. So we need to evaluate the gradient. The gradient of function is equal to 3x cubed, y to negative 2, negative 2x to the fourth, y to power negative 3. And at point 2 and 1, you just do the substitution. Wherever you see x, you're going to substitute 2. Wherever you see y, you're going to use 1, which is 32 and negative 32. So this is our gradient. We are looking for the direction of maximum rate of increase. And we are looking for a unit vector. This is important, everyone. The vector that has magnitude 1. What are we going to do? We're going to do a little bit of division. This vector is equal to 32, negative 32 divided by the norm or magnitude of that vector. Remember that. If you have any vector and divided by its magnitude, this vector is going to be a unit vector. This guy is equal to 32 and negative 32 divided by, if you find the magnitude of 32 and negative 32, it is basically square root of 2 times 32, which becomes square root of 2 divided by 2, 
just separate these two fractions and cancel out 32 and negative square root of 2 divided by 2. So we found the unit vector, the vector with magnitude 1 and here the gradient points in the direction of maximum rate of increase in this direction.